So let, I just wanted to, uh, you know, Roger did a great job about talking about the, the, the rate of change. And I think, you know, when, when uh, as a manufacturer, when we, when we talk about the rate of change, I think people, yeah, yeah, of course it's going to change. But, but the rate of change is accelerating uh, faster than, than it ever has before. And, you know, we've gone from this, uh, this environment, you know, in 1950 of having a corded PBX like this to having a, a single industry standard server that can run 200,000 users. I mean, the, 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 it's just a profound change that we've seen. So 1973, Mitel was founded, and actually the same year, uh, Ethernet was invented. 1978, Mitel launched its first microprocessor, PBX, and these two gentlemen uh, developed TCP IP, which is a backbone of the, uh, the internet. Early 80s, obviously PCs and so on, and that's at the time that we introduced our first digital PBX. So this rate of change is, is really accelerating. So 89, World Wide Web, SIP trunking became a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a proposition that was uh, muted in 1996. And by the end of the 1990s, it was clear that IP was a connection media of choice. And there were lots of vendors in the, in the market in that time that, that did voice over ATM, did you know, were, were voice over Novell networks, but IP won out and uh, the rest is history. But I think what's, what's uh, interesting is VMware uh, introduced virtualization software in 1999. It's now a $2 billion company with 85% market share in virtualization. And at, th at the same time, 2001, we, we introduced our first IP PBX. And, uh, and the reason this radar change is accelerating is our new desktop set uh, shown here uh, has more microprocessing and uh, computing capability than a PBX from 10 years ago. So this is, what, this is why the, this radar change is accelerating is you know, that technology has evolved so much. The other thing that's um, some other trends we're seeing is there's a huge demographic uh, move as well, mostly in the Western world. So five million uh, generation Y is coming of age uh, every year in the US for the next 10 years. There's a huge change in the population. One of the, actually, one of the very common uh, requests we get for our products is can you make the buttons bigger with bigger numbers? Because people can't can't see the numbers. And I think uh, you, know, you can read the rest of the thing, but one of the, one of the other trends we're seeing, which I think is, is, uh, is very compelling, is we're, we're seeing more and more customers that are telling their staff to bring their own equipment. So bring your own, you know, if, you, if you're obsessive about having a Sony Vio laptop, bring it in, we'll, we'll fix it to the corporate network. If you want an iPhone, we don't support iPhone, you bring one in, we'll connect it to the corporate network. And we're seeing more and more people do that, and I think that's because the line between what people use their equipment for personally and what they use it for for business is just absolutely undetectable now. So lots and lots of people doing that. So bring your own equipment in, we'll make it secure and, and so on. We're an, an increasing trend. So some of the other trends we're seeing. So clearly we're seeing uh, you know, a, a huge appetite for connectability around the world. Uh, 20 million office workers in the UK. Uh, 18 million of those office workers spending 20% of their time away from the desk. 60 to 70% of calls go to voicemail. So if you, if you can make these things more efficient, um, then first of all, you're going to be more efficient, and secondly, you're going to serve the customers better, and that's, that's, uh, that's substantial. And I think that the other thing is a dramatic increase in mobile costs. So if you take a, uh, a typical customer, they're now spending more money on their mobile uh, tariffs than they are spending on their fixed wire infrastructure. And it's absolutely out of control. And particularly if you start traveling internationally, you're paying roaming charges. The charges are absolutely brutal. So having the ability to start routing those calls over your wired infrastructure uh, without, without having uh, a communication degree for the person using the cell phone is one of the things we're, we're, uh, we're delivering now. Another example of, of what you can do with this technology now is you can make any phone uh, your designated phone. So you can make your desktop set uh, a phone that people contact you on, you can make your mobile phone the phone you contact, you can make your home phone, you can make the, uh, the phone in, the, uh, uh, in your hotel room when you travel, uh, you can make a, a Nortel handset before, behind a PBX, your own phone. So when somebody calls you, all of those phones ring. And I can pick the call up on any of those calls, and then more importantly, if I'm talking on my desk phone in the office, um, I can transfer that call to my mobile phone with a single button push. And that's absolutely transparent to the, uh, the user, sorry, for the, uh, the, the person at the other end of the call, 
and that gives you flexibility. And of course, when I'm in the office, I'm taking all those calls over the wired infrastructure as opposed to the wireless infrastructure, which means it's cheaper. Here's, an, here's another example of what we've, uh, we've brought to market is um, tele-collaboration. So we, have, we take high-definition video and we combine it with, with collaboration. So here on the uh, screen you can see people having a high-definition video conference at the same time that they're collaborating. And one of the things I think that's very, very different, there's, there's a number of differences that, that might help bring to market with this offer compared to the competition. The first is it uses about 10% or 15% of the bandwidth of our com competition. And bandwidth is far more expensive than the equipment cost. The second thing is you can buy all these components yourself. I see no merit in Mitel taking a flat screen TV, putting a Mitel badge on it, and sell it to you at five times what you can buy it for from, uh, from Dixon's. Okay, so you can go to Dixon's, buy your own screens, or Britannic will buy those screens on your behalf, and they'll do the integration. You can buy your own server, and we'll give you the software to run it on. So you're buying... Uh, the software, the core intellectual property for Mitel is the software, not the hardware. So I can't look at somebody in the, in the, uh, in the face and say why you have to pay 5,000 uh, pounds for a flat screen monitor uh, when you can buy it from Dixon's. So I think, you know, as we, as we move towards a, a software environment, you know, and I think about what this is going to mean for Mitel, you know, I could foresee the day where you don't actually see the Mitel logo anywhere. So you, you'll, you'll see it on administration screens. You might see it on a UC client that's running in your, uh, your PC. You'll see it in various portals. But you're not necessarily going to see it in your equipment room. And you're not necessarily going to see it on your desk either. And I think you know, it's all about then delivering these converged uh, services to any device. So it doesn't matter whether it's a desk phone. It doesn't matter whether it's a Mitel desk phone or somebody else's desk phone. We can deliver the, the, those applications doesn't matter whether it's your mobile handset, doesn't matter whether it's your PC, a laptop, a home phone, uh, a public portal or anything. And I think the other thing that, um, that we see is it really doesn't matter whether these services are delivered um, as customer premise equipment, so as equipment that's residing on your premises. It doesn't matter whether they're centralized in one of your locations and you're distributing these applications to all of your other locations. Or it doesn't matter whether, whether the equipment is is in, in the cloud, or perhaps the equipment it resides at Britannic. But it's about delivering these services in a seamless manner. And it be, in my opinion, it becomes Britannic's challenge to deliver those services, as opposed to you, the customer, worrying about how all these things work together. So I think, you know, to, to try and uh, visualize that a little more, you know, we saw this first trend that went from digital uh, communication to, uh, to voice over IP. We then saw this move to a, uh, a real-time operating system, so away from a proprietary operating system to Linux, so we're using Linux as a real-time operating system. Uh, we then port that software onto industry standard uh, hardware, so you're not buying a proprietary piece of tin anymore, you're buying something that's industry <laughs> standard. Uh, we've then virtualized our PBX core control, and I'll talk about uh, what Mitel's done in terms of virtualizing that application over the next couple of slides. We then can virtualize the desktop so that we can, we can blend the desktop between um, telephony as well as everything, all the other applications. I'll show you an example of that. And then, and then really what that's leading to is you take all of, all of these applications and you collapse them into a data center. And that's a data center that you're managing or it's a data center that's being managed on your behalf. And I think that that, that trend is absolutely inevitable. It doesn't matter whether you get it from Mitel or from somebody else. You know, we believe very strongly that the, the customer appetite is for that trend.